and welcome back to the Cracking Fan YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be doing something special for you guys. I'm going to be walking you through an algorithm to solve any lead code question that you get in an interview setting. What we're going to do is we're going to basically do a mock interview and we're going to use like a basic coder pad because that's what you're going to get for your phone screen or perhaps your onsite. A lot of companies are still doing them virtually. And we're going to walk through a real life example of what you're going to get in an interview. Obviously, lead code is very close to what you get in an interview, but the structure is slightly different. And there are some subtleties that you're going to want to be aware of, because if you're just used to lead code and then you get a real interview question in one of these screens or you know, on site, you might get blindsided by like, whoa, wait, what do you mean? I don't have like all this information available to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a dummy question and I'm going to solve it. You can pause the video if you want. You can solve it on your own and see how close you get to my solution in terms of all the things that I do end to end. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a little presentation where I'm going to walk you through each of the steps that you want to go through uh, in one of these questions. And we'll see, you know, were you able to do them? And maybe you'll pick up on some new tricks. Obviously, I am alone here, so there is no interviewer interviewing me. So I'll kind of just be talking to myself, uh, pretending to interact with the interviewer. Maybe I'll put on like a, a fake English accent or something to represent the interviewer. Who knows? Uh, but essentially, we're just going to solve this question uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, what I did. So let's get started. Okay. Let's get started. Uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is that you have a, a blank text editor, right? And your interviewer is going to ask you to please select your language of choice. So for me, that's Python. At this stage, typically you're gonna get about like five minutes of introduction. They're gonna introduce themselves, what they work on. They're gonna ask you to introduce yourself, what you've been working on in your current company. Personally, I really hate these because it's five minutes wasted that you could use for a question. And if you're struggling on one, that five minutes could be the difference between you passing or you not passing, but that's just how they do it. I guess it's a formality to just introduce yourself. Uh, so now what you're gonna do is the interviewer is basically just gonna paste in the question and you're gonna read it and then you know basically start the problem. So let's do that. So I'm gonna paste it in. That is our question. <clears throat> so let's read it. Given a binary tree, return the product of the largest value in each level of the tree. So we have this tree here and our example solution, 10 times four times 12 times 24 times 12, which is 1,300, uh, 1, 100,000, 138,240. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. So as you can see, you know, obviously the largest value in each product uh, in each row. So there's 10, the four, the 12, the 24 and the 12. So we multiply all of those. And that's how we get our final solution here. So now that we've read the question, and we've kind of reiterated what we want to do. Uh, you know, the next step for me is basically to ask the interviewer some questions. So the first thing that I want to know is basically how is this tree going to be given to me? So how is tree represented, right? Is it a no, uh, node struct where you have like a vowel, a left and a right or list representation? So, okay, I'm the interviewer. I'm going to say uh, I want you to use the, the node uh, representation. Okay, so we know that it's a node struct and it has a value and a left and a right child. Cool. So now we know how the tree is represented. Uh, the next thing that I want to know is, uh, okay, we are calculating product. Uh, can this overflow? So in Python, actually, there is no concept of overflow because you'll just keep using uh, RAM uh, from your computer and the likelihood of you overflowing your RAM on a modern computer is very unlikely, but other languages do have overflows. So you probably want to ask this. Uh, it just shows that you're actually thinking about things. So uh, the interviewer would then say, you know, uh, don't worry about uh, overflow, just calculate it. Okay, so I've asked my two kind of clarifying questions. And uh, I guess actually one more question I want to ask is if uh, root is null, return zero. And then the interviewer would say yes, uh, if root is null, uh, return zero. So obviously I don't have an interviewer next to me, but this is uh, you know a response you'd get from a normal interviewer. Okay, so I've asked my questions. Now um, what I want to do is actually talk about how I'm going to solve this question. So obviously I need to basically figure out what the largest value on each level is, and I need to you know 
multiply that using some sort of like running product variable. So since I need to traverse this tree on a level by level basis, the easiest way for me to do this is going to be using a breadth first search, breadth first search uh, with a Q uh, and keep track of largest variable um, at end of each level. What I want to do uh, is multiply uh, running product by the largest bar on that level. And that's essentially what I want to do. And at the end, uh, I'll just return my product, which will be the solution. Are you okay with that approach? At this point, your interviewer would say, yeah, go for it. If they have any problems, they'll ask you to do it another way. But for the purposes of this example, the interviewer is okay with it. So at this point, what I want to do is actually code it. So I'm going to say def uh, tree product and we're gonna be given a root. So let's handle our, our uh, first edge case here. So we're gonna say, if not root, then we just return zero as the interviewer instructed us to do. Now we need a variable to keep track of our product. So we're gonna say product equals zero, sorry, product equals one. Uh, and then we need basically a queue to do our level order traversal. So we're gonna say queue equals collections dot d deck, and we're gonna put in the root. And now we need to actually perform <coughs> our BFS here. So we're going to say while Q and for each level, we need to keep track of the largest variable. So largest var, uh, largest value is going to be, so we're going to set this equal to float minus infinity. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically just traverse that level. So we're going to say for blank in len range Q, sorry, uh, no, it should be range len q sorry range len q um we're gonna say okay so node equals q dot pop left and now we're going to basically say okay so if node dot val is greater than largest val actually we can just do it directly so we're going to say largest val is going to be the maximum of node dot val and largest val so now we're going to update our largest val if this node value is the largest. And what we want to do now is we need to basically add the children to the tree. Uh, obviously, I don't want to deal with null nodes, so I'm going to check. So we're going to say if node.left, then it should get added to the queue. So we're going to say queue.append node.left. And we're going to do the same thing for the right. So we're going to say if node.right, we're going to say queue.append node.right and that will handle adding the children. Now, once this for loop breaks, that means we have processed the entire level. And the last thing that we have to do here is simply uh, update our product. So we're gonna say product times equals whatever the largest val for that level was, and then we can simply uh, continue. So at this point, all we need to do is simply return the product and we have our solution. <clears throat> so. Before I talk about the time and space complexity, I actually want to walk through this example line by line and basically go through the algorithm and just double check that it works. So uh, obviously, I guess we can skip the, the checking the root part because that part is pretty straightforward. Let's actually just go through the queue. So let's initialize our queue here and we'll just add a few little lines here. So queue and originally it's going to be this node 10. So we're going to be uh, in this level. So obviously the queue exists because it's not empty. So we're going to enter this while loop. Our largest val for this level is going to be um, negative infinity. <clears throat> now we're going to process our um, Q. So range line Q, this is going to return uh, one. So we're only going to make one iteration through this. So we're going to pop our 10 from the Q. And this is going to be what we're working with. Um, we're going to check whether the largest val is actually uh, this new value, which it is because 10 is greater than minus infinity. So the largest value on this level becomes 10. And actually, let's add a variable here for our product. So we're going to say product equals one. Uh, and then does this 10 have a left child? It does. It has this three. So let's add that to the queue. Does it have a right child? It does. So let's add it to the queue as well. Oops. And now what we need to do now that we've processed everything on this level is simply to multiply our product by the largest value. So we're going to say multiply by 10. Um, so 10 here. And now we can move on to the next level. So 
Obviously, the queue still exists, so we re-enter our while loop. Now the largest val gets reset back to negative infinity. Negative infinity. And then we're going to go through our you know queue again. So obviously, there's two items in here. So we're going to pop the first one. So it's going to be popping this three. So we pop the three. And we're going to check, OK, is this three greater than our current largest value, which is minus infinity? It is. So we put this three here. And we're going to check, does three have any children? Uh, on the left side, yes, it has a seven. So let's add that to the queue. Does it have any children on the right? It does. It's this 10. So we're going to add that to the queue. And now uh, we go through our for loop again, because there was still remember that four that we need to do. So we pop the four and we check, OK, is four greater than our largest value of this three? Yep. So this now becomes four. And does four have any children on the left and the right side? Yes, so 12 and this 9. And basically, uh, now what we need to do is update our product. So we're going to say product times 4. So it's going to be 40 now. And then, OK, so now we can go through the queue. And for the purposes of this exercise, I'm not going to go through the entire thing because I don't want to bore you guys and this video is going to get too long. But in a real interview, you most likely would uh, walk through the entirety of this question. Hopefully you don't get some like big tree like this because it's going to take a while to actually walk through. But you do want to walk through basically step by step, go through the queue. OK, you pop this element, you're checking this. So literally you're walking through your solution line by line. Um, this is basically going to help you sanity check your solution and catch bugs. If you realize that you made a mistake, then this is your perfect time to basically do it. If you just say, okay, here's my solution and boom, that's it. Then if you had a bug, your interviewers would be like, well, you were reckless, you were careless. That's a bad coding signal. So just a little tip there. Now, the last thing that we want to do is actually just talk about the time and space complexity. So this is a BFS traversal through a binary tree. So obviously, we're going to have to go level by level here. And in the worst case, obviously, we have to visit every single node. So that's going to be big O of n, uh, where n is the size of the tree, uh, I guess, in nodes, right? So n equals the number of nodes. Space complexity is also going to be big O of n. Obviously, we have this Q here uh, that we're using. And this could potentially, uh, the amount of nodes it's going to store is dependent on the size of the tree. So it's going to be big O of n, or again, where n is the size of the tree. So that is how you solve this question. That's you know how you would do this flow end to end. Now, obviously, I purposely didn't want to go too much into detail. Obviously, I did slip at a few points and started talking about um, you know some of my tips and tricks. But let's actually go to the presentation now, and I'll talk you through exactly what I did line by line in case you didn't catch it. Uh, and we can talk about why you need to do these things and how it's going to make you successful. So let's go to the presentation now. OK, time for the presentation on the exact algorithm that you want to follow. Step one. Read the question and reiterate the problem statement. The first thing that you want to do is obviously read the question. Make sure you understand what it's asking. Repeat back the question in simple terms to your interviewer. The purpose of this is that so you actually understand the problem you're solving and don't accidentally code up some other solution because you didn't read it carefully enough. That's pretty much like an instant fail. Step two, ask questions. This is what separates a good candidate from an inexperienced or bad candidate. Good candidates will ask clarifying questions to better understand the problem. Bad candidates will just jump straight into coding. Some things to ask. Talk about some base cases. In our example, it was what happens when the root is null. You also want to talk about the input representation. Notice that when we were given the question, we weren't given any function headers. We have no idea how the input is given to us. This is why I asked, is our tree given to us as a node, which you know has a value and a left and a right pointer, or is it represented as a list? You cannot assume the input shape. You can and will fail for this. Lead code tells you what the input is, how it's structured, and what the output um, should be. So you kind of cheat there because you can just look at the function header. But what happens when you're not given the function header or you're not given those constraints? These are things that you need to ask your interviewer. Another uh, edge case that you want to check for is, you know, in our example, was what happens if the product is too big? Can it overflow? Like I said, in Python, this doesn't really happen because your computer will actually just keep start using more of its RAM. But if you're in C++ or Java, 
where you know you're bound on the size of your product here then you can have an overflow and that's something you want to ask about you don't want to just do the product and what happens when it gets really really big so in the real world you never just start working without clarifying the problem scope and an interviewer an interview is no different right this is a big signal for the interviewers so make sure you ask questions because otherwise you just come off as inexperienced or as a bad candidate and you can fail for this step three come up with and discuss your potential solution with the interviewer at this stage you want to formulate your approach to the question notice that we haven't written any code yet we wanted to make sure we understood the question asked our clarifying questions and now we need to figure out how we want to solve this don't just assume the solution you come up with is the one that the interviewer wants if you come up with a recursive solution but the interviewer actually wanted iterative this is the time to find that out not after you've spent time coding it up and then they just tell you oh can you do it iteratively please once the interviewer gives you the green light to code your solutions then you can start writing step four code your solution this part is pretty self-explanatory code the solution that you just discussed make sure you use clear variable names and avoid coding anti-patterns and you need to be fast here this is where your preparation is going to save you if you prepared correctly you will already have encountered this question or similar questions in the past you don't have time to waste here as there's still a lot to do for this question which actually takes more time than actually coding it step five the step-by-step -step walkthrough now that you've coded your solution you need to walk through uh, walk your interviewer through the solution line by line in our example we went through literally every iteration of our while and for loops talked about the current variable and basically went through line by line of what is being executed this is your best opportunity to catch bugs and fix issues with the, with your solution. The interviewer will also be watching and can bring your attention to issues with your code. Use these hints. Unfortunately, if they give you too many hints, then that could actually be, you know, you failing because clearly, I guess they just think, oh, he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, so ideally, you don't get too many hints from the interviewer because that can be not good either. Step six, time and space complexity. So you wrote the code, you walked your interviewer through it line by line, and now you can talk about the time and space complexity. So discuss the components of your solution and derive the overall time and space complexity. Again, you should pretty much have this memorized for the question if it's a popular one, or at least know the base time and space complexity for popular solutions. For us, this was a, bi uh, this was a BFS through a binary tree, which is always gonna be big O in uh, VED in time and space. Uh, even though this question wasn't, apologies for the siren in the background, uh, so even though this question wasn't one that's on leak code, it's basically just a level order traversal, and those are always going to be big O of N, time and space. So know your patterns, because they're going to come up a lot, even if the questions aren't 100% the same. And that's it. It's a pretty simple algorithm. This works for any interview, and gives you the best chance of success. Let's recap. Read the question. Ask questions. Discuss your proposed solution before coding, code your solution, walk through line by line, variable by variable, and then talk about the time and space complexity. So thank you for watching. Thanks for taking the time to learn about my algorithm for success. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment and a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, then drop a subscription because I'll be making a ton of videos in the future, and I already have over 100 videos helping you prepare for interviews. Thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.